Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of The Xamarin Show, Snack Pack Edition. Uh, I'm here in the cozy and quaint Studio B of Channel 9, but don't worry, I got some awesome Xamarin content for you. And today we're going to be talking about the preview of the Xamarin Forms Previewer. And that's right, a preview of the Previewer. Now, the idea here is that often when you're building Xamarin Forms applications, you're creating the user interface all in a cross platform XAML markup, which is like an XML type. Uh, markup with some data bindings so it can actually tie into your code behind. Now, normally what you'd have to do is uh, write your XAML, deploy to a simulator or a device uh, to see it actually being rendered and make sure your data bindings are all set up correctly. Uh, however, the Xamarin Forms Previewer tries to get rid of that, that loop over, that kind of that debug loop over and over and over again. And the idea is what if you could just, I don't know, to see what your user interface looks like uh, inside of Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio uh, before actually having to deploy. So for little changes, little tweaks, and things like that, it'd be easier just to set a few properties. Now, the preview is not a designer, so it's not like drag and drop and things like that. But what it'll do is it'll render and run your application live inside of the actual IDEs. Now, I'm going to be demoing everything right here on my MacBook inside of Xamarin Studio, uh, but the Xamarin Forms Previewer is also available inside of Visual Studio, just in a little different window option. And I'll have all the links uh, if you're looking, if you're using Visual Studio or Xamarin Studio in the show notes below, so make sure you check that out. So let's go ahead and swap over into my Mac. So here I am, and I just have a very simple application that I kind of like to show off, which is like this little monkeys application for iOS and Android. It has a few views, so home, monkeys page, which is a list of monkeys, a details page, uh, and then some view models to do some data binding. Now if we see here, we have a few uh, a content page, we have a button, we have a few different buttons and a switch down here. So very simple user interface, no data binding. Now if I wanted to run that, I'd have to actually you know, run it, put on a similar device. But now I can come up to this little preview pane in the top right, and I can actually open up the Xamarin Forms Previewer. So here it is, uh, and what we can see is that we have a full uh, Android view right here of the, the XAML that is being rendered live. If I toggle over up here to the platform of iOS, we see what it looks like on an iOS application. If I come in and I was to change a setting here, let's say uh, background color, and I set it equal to uh, aqua, for instance, it'll now update the background there. As you can see, as I'm typing, it'll actually tell me that there's an exception happening because uh, the actual uh, XAML was incorrect. If I toggle back over here to, to Android, it, it's back again. Now I can go ahead and delete that because it's not super pretty to look at. But now what's nice is if I come in and uh, start adding more buttons into the user interface, I can come in and I can say, oh, I really want this button down here. And it'll say, hello, um, Xamarin Show. And I can start modifying and essentially playing around with the different properties. So if I wanted to see what the horizontal options uh, of you know, end looked like, for instance, I can see, oh, that's going to move it all the way over to the right-hand side. If I put it over on the start, well, OK, now it's going to be in the start. And then I can see what the default is, which is actually just going to be the fill all the way. I can start playing around with margins. If I wanted to adjust this to 80 for some reason, and I want to say, oh, this is, you know, needs to be 80-80, and oh, what actually happens if I just set the margin to 80? It doesn't move because it'll fill in all sides. You can see what it looks like when I set that to false. And now, of course, I could go and say, oh, what does that look like on, on iOS? So I tap on iOS, and sure enough, we have our iOS look and feel. So as I start building out these buttons, I might want to come in and say, you know, border color equals uh, aqua, because it's our new favorite color. And then I can say um, uh, border uh, uh, radius equals 2, and border width equals 2, for instance. And now we start to get a border around it. And I can actually start, I can actually zoom in here down on the bottom right. I can say, ooh, OK, that's interesting. But what if I give it a bigger radius of like 9, for instance, or, or 20, 50? You know, ooh, that's going to look a little bit too much there. So you can actually just start playing around and see the actual user interface update in real time. Uh, which is really nice to do without having to do these little small tweaks to the user interface there. And of course, you can see what it looks like over on Android. I mean, there's no impact here because the border uh, impact doesn't affect the buttons there. So you can kind of see what happens differently between iOS and Android and what's going on inside the user interface. So what if you want to do something a little bit more complex? Uh, what if we have a list of data? So if we look at our monkeys page, uh, here what we can see is that we have a stack uh, layout, we have a button that says how many monkeys. And right now, uh, if we, I actually, usually when I'm inside of here, I like to drop down the entire view so I should do something like this. 
We have a button that says how many monkeys. I have a label here that has a data binding to monkey count with a string format. And if I actually was to do something like um, put monkeys in here,、um, you know, it's not being able to data bind anything, so nothing's happening. And then we have a list view here, so there's monkeys and keys and grouping enabled. But the problem is that I don't actually have any data that's being bound to it. In fact, if I toggle over to iOS, right, there's no there's no data inside here. It's just a blank list, and you can clearly see that the the list view is there, but it's a blank list. Now, if I come over into my solution explorer and go into the monkeys view model, it's a very simple, just like a grouping. I have an observable collection of monkeys. I have monkeys group that are inside of here, and I just have this little monkeys view model. So, how do I get that data into here,、uh, and how do I get it into my actual view? Well, we can actually use this pattern that、oh, became very popular with MVVM Lite that I, I like to use a lot, which is is called the view model locator. And I have a blog about it that again I'll put in the show notes. So if I come into my app.cs, I've created a little static helper class here. So it says, "Hey, you know,、uh, this is going to be a public static class, a view model locator. You can name it whatever you want. Here's the、uh, monkeys view model, and just create a new one for me. And if you're on the details page, we'll just go ahead and grab the first monkey that's inside of here. So the details view model just takes in a monkey that's inside of here and assigns it to it. So that's it, and that's pretty cool." So now what you can do is you can come back into the actual monkeys page, and we can come up and actually assign the binding context up top. So what I can do is I can first create a namespace. So XMLNS, and I'll say design, and I'll say equals CLR namespace, and I'll say monkeys because that's the name of my portable class library.、And、I'll say assembly equals monkeys. And that's essentially where does my view model locator exist? Well, it exists in the namespace of monkeys, and it's inside of my monkeys、uh, assembly that's going to be output. Now, what I need to do is actually need to put in a another line of code. So, what I'm going to do is actually grab this snippet because it's a little bit a little bit long,、uh, and we're going to set the binding context right here. So, let me let me show you what this looks like while we move this down. So, we can see as I have a、uh, a binding context. Set to a static, and it says, "Where does it live?" Well, it lives on the design view model locator dot monkeys view model. So there's a static class somewhere inside of the design namespace called view model locator, and go assign it to the monkeys view model. So there we go. So now what I can do is I can hit preview, and I actually get my monkeys here. We can see that it already says nine monkeys. We should get the images loading in because again, it's actually running our application. If I was to go ahead and change some of this, and I'll say, you know, that oh,、um, it's not grouping, and we actually just want monkeys inside of here, we can actually see it update and render our application live, and I can adjust the string here, and it's actually updating the total monkeys. We can enable and disable the grouping on here. So if I say true, and then I set this back to monkeys grouped,、um, it'll actually now、um, group our actual monkeys back and forth. Uh, that we need, so make sure that you're actually doing the data binding here. So monkeys, monkeys grouped,、um, monkeys grouped. There it is. So as we start playing around, we could actually then modify some of these different locations. So if I really was thinking that, well, the name、uh, property, or, or we could, or I guess we could adjust some other things, like maybe like the images should be a little bit bigger, or should they be a little bit smaller、uh, inside of here? So the width. And the the height here, we can set the the height and width a little bit here, and say, oh well, the the rows maybe should be、uh, the row height should be you know 88 or maybe 100 here. So I'm going to start modifying this around. There we go. So now we're actually getting bigger views. You go, oh, there's some weird oddities going on here because we're setting the row height. So we'd actually have to do some other modifications in the UI.、But、this is looking pretty good already. So I have the monkeys. I'm doing a few other things. And I can adjust my different views without having to redeploy my application. Now, every time I make the change, it will go ahead and, and reevaluate a few different things in my user interface. So it may take a little bit of time, but it's a lot faster than having to redeploy. And if you don't want the preview, just go ahead and toggle down the preview, and it goes away. So there you have it. Taking a look at the Xamarin Forms Previewer、uh, that's in preview today. I'll have all the links in the show notes. Until next time, I'm James Montemagno, and this has been the Xamarin Show.